Here are the things that you'll need when using the motion sensor. On the left is the cable that came with the motion sensor. You'll need four AA batteries, the CBR2 motion sensor, and the TI Inspire graphing calculator. If you open up the motion sensor, you'll notice that there are two settings. On the left is a setting to use with cars and ramps. On the right is a setting for walking with the motion matching activity or using a ball or pendulum. The cable that comes with the motion sensor has two different ends. One is for plugging into the TI Inspire calculator and the other is for plugging into the motion sensor itself. We're now going to connect the CBR2 to the TI Inspire calculator using the cable provided. First thing, power on the calculator and then take the mini USB and plug it in to the calculator. Take the other end of the cable and plug that into the CBR2 motion sensor. As soon as you plug it in, your DataQuest app will start up and you'll hear a clicking sound coming from the motion sensor. The CBR2 motion sensor works by using echolocation. Basically, it sends out sound waves to an object, such as this book. A sound wave will be emitted from the sensor to the book and then bounce back and received by the sensor. What your calculator will do is record up here in the top bar the distance away from the object. So that's how the motion sensor works. If we connect the CBR2 motion sensor to our calculator, you'll notice that the DataQuest app will launch automatically and the motion sensor green light will come on and you'll hear a clicking sound. The motion sensor is not accurate within 15 centimeters, so I have this ruler here marked at 15 centimeters to show us this distance where the accuracy is not very good on the motion sensor. So if I take this book and hold it here at about 15 or 18 centimeters, you'll be able to see in the uh, window of the calculator the distance away the motion sensor is from the book. It's sending its sound waves to the book bouncing back and being recorded here on my calculator. If I slowly move the book away, you'll watch the distance change in your viewfinder. And as I slowly move the book back, again watching the distance change. Let me give you a close-up of what that looks like on the calculator. So with the book here at about 15 to 18 centimeters away from the motion sensor, I'll slowly move the book away. And you should see the distance increasing right here in the calculator. And now I'll slowly move the book back towards the motion sensor. If you're going to use the motion sensor for an activity like the motion match or graph match or the hiker lab, you take the motion sensor, open it up, and the student would hold the motion sensor close to them with this part aiming down. So the ultrasound would be emitted from the motion sensor to the wall and then bouncing back as the students do the activities. Some students like to hold the calculator in one hand and the CBR2 in the other. Other students like to hold them as one unit, and I would suggest putting an elastic around to hold it safely, maybe another elastic to grab some of the cable. But in the next video, we'll show you how to do the motion match or graph match activity, as well as the hyperlab.